Hey, welcome back to New Books. I'm Melissa. I'm here on my own today, but we've got lots of new fiction books and nonfiction books to show you. So let's get started. First off, we've got Deep Water by Emma Bamford. Wanting to get away from it all, dreaming of a remote island paradise, be careful what you wish for. When a naval vessel finds a sailing yacht in distress in the middle of the Indian Ocean, Captain Daniel Tengu orders his ship to rush to its aid. On board is a British couple, a badly injured man, Jake, and his traumatized wife, Virginia, who claim to have come from Amaranth, a remote island known only by word of mouth. Then, shaking with fear, she confesses, it's all my fault, I killed them. So that's, once again, Deep Water by Emma Bamford. We have the newest from James Lee Burke. It's called Every Cloak Rolled in Blood. James Lee Burke's most autobiographical novel. It's all about novelist Aaron Holland Broussard, who is shattered when his daughter Fannie Mae dies suddenly, as he tries to honor her memory by saving two young men from a life of crime amid their opioid-ravaged community. He is drawn into a network of villainy that includes a violent former Klansman, a far from holy minister, a biker club posing as evangelicals, and a murderer who has been hiding in plain sight. James Lee Burke, Every Cloak Rolled in Blood. All right, this one is called The Murder of Mr. Wickham, and it's by Claudia Gray. Um, it looks like a fun little book. It's, um, it's a mystery, but it's set in the world of Jane Austen and pulls in characters from her various novels, um, all trying to figure out who killed Mr. Wickham. So that one looks like a lot of fun. And we've got the newest from Nora Roberts. It's called Night Work. When Harry Booth started stealing at nine, it was a way to keep a roof over his ailing mother's head and pay her medical bills. At night, in darkness, he'd slip into rich people's homes, opening drawers and safes filled with luxuries he could trade for precious cash. When his mother finally succumbed to cancer after a long, valiant battle, he left Chicago but kept up his night work. From leaving a party at a Savannah mansion with a diamond bracelet in his pocket to an extended stay in New Orleans, he dons new identities and stays careful, observant, distant. In his line of work, he, he can't afford to attract attention or get attached. Okay, that work by Nora Roberts. This book is called Breathless. Amy McCullough is the author, and it's a thriller. This thriller would be unsettling enough at sea level, but in the depth, death zone, it's suffocatingly tense. McCullough combines extreme mountaineering with murder to create a novel that's chilling, vivid, and entirely unique. And that was a review from Abigail Dean, who is the New York Times bestselling author of Girl A. So, thriller called Breathless by Amy McCullough. Next, we've got Secrets by Fern Michaels. Every antique tells a story. Cullen and Luna Bodeman learned that through their parents' furniture business. Now with their restoration shop and cafe, they often find themselves at the center of those stories, unraveling mysteries for their clients. The old steamer chest that Cullen receives from an anonymous source is fascinating in its own right. But inside, Cullen discovers more, a locked diary accompanied by an unsigned letter asking for the contents to be restored to their original state. Fern Michael's new book, Secrets. Right, then we've got this book, it's called Sleepwalk, and it's by Dan Chown. Chown. A propulsive, darkly comic novel about a shaggy, tender-hearted mercenary running from his past and the nefarious people he works for on an odyssey across America. Once again, it's called Sleepwalk. Alright, got a couple of, or a few big hitters. Got Clive Custler's newest called Dark Vector. It's a novel from the Numa Files. Kurt Austin must find a vanished ship and stave off a global catastrophe in the latest novel in the number one New York Times bestselling series created by the Grand Master of Adventure, Clive Custler. Once again, Dark Vector, a novel from the Numa Files, Clive Custler. Next we have Tom Clancy's Op Center. Call of Duty. In this race to the finish thriller in the best-selling series, an attempt to exfiltrate a Chinese scientist threatens to incite a war between China and the United States. 
So this is another from Tom Clancy's Op Center series. It's called Call of Duty. Then we have John Grisham, his newest book called Sparring Partners. I'm sure that this one's on a lot of your lists. Homecoming takes us back to Ford County, the fictional setting of many of John Grisham's unforgettable stories. Jake Brigance is back, but he's not in the courtroom. He's called upon to help an old friend, Matt Stafford, a former lawyer in Clanton, who three years earlier became a local legend when he stole money from his clients, divorced his wife, filed for bankruptcy, and left his family in the middle of the night. Now Mac is back, and he's leaning on his old pals Jake and Harry Rex to help him. His homecoming is, does not go as planned. In Strawberry Moon, we meet Cody Wallace, a young death row inmate only three hours away from execution. His lawyers can't save him, the court slammed the door, and the governor says no to a last-minute request for clemency. As the clock winds down, Cody has one final request. And in the third story, The Sparring Partners, the Mallory brothers, Kirk and Rusty, are two successful young lawyers who inherited a once prosperous firm when its founder, their father, was sent to prison. But Kirk and Rusty loathe each other and speak only when necessary. As the firm disintegrates, the resulting fiasco falls into the lap of Diantha Bradshaw, the only person the partners trust. Can she save the Malloys, or does she take a stand for the first time in her career and try to clear herself? So once again, these are, it's a collection of three stories from John Grisham, all in one novel, or all in one volume, called Sparring Partners. Then we have um, another popular author, Emily Giffen. Her newest is called Meant to Be. A restless golden boy and a girl with a troubled past navigate a love story that may be doomed in this irresistible new novel from the New York Times bestselling author of Something Borrowed and The Lies That Find. If you're a fan of Emily Giffen, check out her newest, Meant to Be. All right, we've got a couple more. Um, this one is a new science fiction book. It's called A Memory Called Empire from Arkady Martin. Layered, nuanced, and startlingly imaginative, A Memory Called Empire is a sprawling space opera debut that puts a rare new stamp on the genre. Ambassador Mahit Desmar is far from home. Her predecessor has been murdered. Her one connection to home has gone silent. So, new science fiction, space opera, it's called A Memory Called Empire. The last fiction book today is from Diane C. McPhail. It's called The Seamstress of New Orleans. Against the backdrop of the first all-female Mardi Gras crew in turn-of-the-century New Orleans, Diane McPhail's mesmerizing historical novel tells of two strangers separated by background but bound by an unexpected secret and of the strength and courage women draw from and inspire in each other. So, The Seamstress of New Orleans from Diane C. McPhail. Moving on to the nonfiction today, first off we've got this book, it's a collection of poetry. It's called Time as a Mother. It's from Ocean Vuong. This is her second collection of poetry. In this deeply intimate second poetry collection, Ocean Vuong searches for life among the aftershocks of his mother's death, embodying the parody of sitting with grief while determined to survive beyond it. So again, Time as a Mother, collection of poetry. So we've got this book, it's called Life with the Afterlife, 13 Truths I Learned About Ghosts, and that's from Amy Bruni, who is the host of Kindred Spirits. All right, next up, there's The Gaudy Wars, Taking Down America's Most Notorious Mobster. That's from John Gleason. Then we've got a memoir, it's called Fly Girl, from Anne Hood. Fly Girl is a sheer pleasure, a hilarious and often moving look back at the bygone era and a young woman's coming of age. In 1978, in the tailwind of the golden age of air travel, flight attendants were the epitome of glamour and sophistication. Fresh out of college and hungry to experience the world and maybe one day write about it, Anne Hood joined their ranks. After a grueling job search, Hood survived TWA's rigorous breach training academy and learned to evacuate seven kinds of aircrafts, deliver a baby, mix proper cocktails, administer oxygen, and stay calm no matter what the situation. So, 
memoir of her times as a flight attendant called Fly Girl. All right, next, a very timely book. It's called Zelensky, the unlikely, the unlikely Ukrainian hero who defied Putin and united the world. That's from Andrew L. Urban and Chris McLeod. The first major profile of Ukraine's courageous president, Volodymyr Zelensky. We've got this book from Quincy Jones, the um, music producer, well known music producer. It's called 12 Notes on Life and Creativity. From Quincy Jones, the legendary musician, producer, and beloved mentor comes 12 Notes, his collection of wisdom and musings on creativity and life. Right, this book is from an Alabama author. It's called When the Wolf Camped at Our Door, My Childhood in the Great Depression. It's by Aileen Kilgore Henderson, who um, is from up a little north of here in Tuscaloosa County, Alabama. So this is her reflections on growing up during the Great Depression. All right, next, we've got this book. It's called Moonshot, Inside Pfizer's Nine-Month Race to Make the Impossible Possible, from Dr. Albert Borla. It's all about the COVID-19 vaccine. Then we've got this book, The Hawk Method, The Three Principles of Marketing That Made Over 3,000 Brands Soar, from Eric Huberman. All right. And we've got two books um, for our gardeners out there. First, we've got The Kitchen Garden Revival, A Modern Guide to Creating a Stylish, Small-Scale, Low-Maintenance, Edible Garden. And that is from Nicole Johnsy Burke of Gardenary. And then we also have A Woman's Garden, Grow Beautiful Plants and Make Useful Things. That's written by Tanya Anderson of Lovely Greens. It's all about plants and projects for home, health, beauty, healing, and more. So those two gardening books will be on the new shelf. Check them out if you're interested. Last but not least, we've got The Palace Papers, Inside the House of Windsor and the Truth and the Turmoil. That's by Tina Brown. So if you're interested in any of these books, um, come into the library, check out our new book section, or you can visit the library's website at fairhopelibrary.org. Have a good day.